Hi, I'm Cam Franklin here, a retired Coast Guard officer and SAM's accredited marine surveyor with over 40 years of experience in the maritime and diving industry. I've amassed literally thousands of photos of all the bad things I've found on boats during my career as a marine surveyor. So what we're going to do today is take a look at some of my favorites. We're going to take a look at each picture. We're going to discuss why they're evil, evil, and we're going to discuss what you need to do to correct them. So hop in, buckle up, keep your arms and legs inside the car at all times as we take a carnival-like ride tour through the cavalcade of owner-induced perversions that I like to call Captain Frank's Sea Chest of Horror. Sea Chest of Horror. This plastic bait well pump is mounted directly to a bronze uh, seacock. Composite uh, fittings, you know, plastic, PVC, marlin, etc., to metal fittings or, or joints are bad things, particularly where seacocks and through holes below the waterline are concerned. Uh, metallic and composite components have different expansion and contraction ratios, which can result in uh, composite component failure due to cracks and splits. This is especially true in this case uh, because the pump acts as a lever uh, as the boat's pounding and bouncing around and it puts additional pressure on the fitting. A much better option would be to replace this with a bulkhead mounted pump and then plummet to the through hole and seacock. Boaters are creative a lot when it comes to solving problems afloat. Not only is this homegrown connector slash junction splice that's used in the positive battery conductor non-standard to say the least, but it also leaves an energized bolt to arc and spark while bouncing around the engine compartment. And what's up with the, uh, the green wire connected to these red positive uh, wires? Collar codes? <laughs> we don't need to follow those things. So what we have here is not failure to communicate, it's your basic fire hazard. Cooling water is injected into the aft section of this exhaust riser where the hose is. However, between that point and the engine is a section of dry exhaust that gets extremely hot. This section of the riser should be lagged or wrapped with a suitable insulating material to prevent burns and protect equipment, such as the hose that's resting on it, uh, from damage. Uh, look closely and you'll also see that there are no stainless steel clamps holding the exhaust hose on the riser. Okay, so take a good look here at this photo. Uh, it provides a cornucopia of bad things that you'll find on boats. Uh, we're going to go over them one at a time and point them out to you. First up, the bilge pump is wired directly to the battery without the use of a fuse or circuit breaker for protection. Bilge pumps must always be protected by an appropriately sized fuse or circuit breaker. Also, the bilge pump wires are not properly secured. Wire runs should be secured and supported at least every 18 inches. Also, while the bilge pump has an automatic float switch, it does not have a manual on switch. Um, every bilge pump installation should always include a manual on and off switch in addition to any automatic float switches you may have. This allows the pump to be energized in the event that the float switch becomes inoperative. And while we're down here at the bilge pump, two other things that uh, we don't like to see, uh, twist on wire nuts and tape joints. The wire nut, it'll eventually fall off due to vibration. Uh, the tape, it'll eventually fall off, gets old and unravels. Uh, in both cases, they can leave exposed positive wires uh, that can provide a shock hazard or, you know, just arcing and sparking as they bounce around. Both of these wire connections should be made with proper marine grade connectors, preferably those with attached heat shrink tubing to prevent moisture entry and corrosion. Next, let's take a look at the battery. Uh, for one, uh, the battery itself is not secured properly. Um, per ABYC recommendations, batteries should be secured uh, so that there is no movement more than one inch in any direction. Uh, the other thing here is the positive terminal for the battery is not covered. Uh, again, standards require that the positive terminal for the battery be covered with a non-conductive shield uh, to prevent accidental shorting. This shield can be in the form of the rubber boots that you're familiar with, I'm sure. Uh, or it could also be if the battery box had a lid on it, that would suffice for it as well. We've also got the use of the evil wing nuts to make battery connections. Per ABYC, uh, American Boat and Yacht Council standards, 
Uh, battery cables and other conductors size 6 AWG and larger should not be connected to the battery with wing nuts. Uh, wing nuts are extremely difficult to properly torque and they typically work loose due to vessel movement and vibration. A better choice to secure battery cables and connections would be an appropriately sized stainless steel nylon nut.